Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I've got a little bit different video for you guys today. I'm actually not going to be working on anything, but it is the big reveal of the new engine that I just picked up for the ugly truck. Now, I'll kind of take you guys back to square one if you're unfamiliar with this project and sort of where it all began. The whole premise was based off of sort of an inexpensive but fun, budget-minded sport truck. So, I went down to Alabama and I picked up a 2000 Chevy Silverado 1500 extended cab short box two-wheel drive. Had a 5.3 underneath the hood and a blown 4L60E behind that. Now, the 5.3 and, well, the whole truck had 325,000 miles on it when I first picked it up, and it was well-worn. And the transmission had no first or, no, second or fourth gear, actually. And come to find out, there was a broken band inside the transmission, but I just didn't want to mess around with it because I knew someday I'd be making a lot more power, and I didn't want to have that 4L60 behind the engine, which I have right behind me, because I knew it just wouldn't hold up. So the very first thing I did to Ugly Truck was swap out a 4L80 instead of the 4L60, which is a much stronger transmission, has some different gear ratios and things like that, but again, strength is kind of what I was going for. After that, I lowered the suspension down a little bit. Two inches in the front with some drop spindles and four inches out back with some shackles and hangers. That got the truck sitting pretty good along with a set of late model 18 inch Silverado wheels. That's just kind of the final stance that the truck is going to have. So I'm pretty happy there. Next up, I did a few small cosmetic things just to kind of clean it up a little bit and remove some of the ugly chrome trim that was on it here and there, just to make the truck look a little more presentable, but still ugly. I wanted to keep that going on. After I took care of the suspension, the very next thing was the rear axle. It has an 8.6 10 bolt, which is a fairly strong unit, but it came with 342 gears and an open differential, neither of which are very good for high performance driving. So I swapped it out to a 430 ratio and a Detroit True Track differential, which will put power down to both wheels and it lets you do pretty awesome burnouts. So now we're at the part of the story where it's time to add a little bit more power and this is probably what you're here to see today. So Ugly Truck came with a 5.3 LM7 and it's rated at 285 horsepower and 330 pounds of torque. That's not bad and the LM7s are kind of the go-to swap engine if you've got a different vehicle you want an LS, a lot of times you're going to pick up a 5.3. Now, the first generation 99 to 07 in pickup trucks, LS style engines, use a 24 tooth reluctor wheel on the crankshaft and a 1 tooth reluctor on the camshaft. Now, they made LS engines for many, many years, and the later generations had 58 tooth cranks, but I wanted to stay within the family of 24 tooth cranks so I could use my existing computer wiring harness and not have to mess around with any odd adapter boxes. So, I had a few options to consider. Now, the next biggest engine is pretty much the 6.0. They made two varieties, the LQ4 and the LQ9. The LQ4 was a lower compression engine, 364 cubic inches, and they mostly used it in heavy duty applications like 2500 HDs and so on, you know, big Suburbans, trucks that are doing a lot of towing. Its bigger brother, the LQ9, still 364 cubic inches, but it had a higher compression ratio, and that was used in more of the premium vehicles like the Silverado SS, some Escalades, and probably a couple other vehicles as well. Now, that would be kind of the logical swap engine because it'll dump right in in place of the LM7. You won't really have to change anything. I could use my existing exhaust manifolds, my intake, you know, the wiring harness, I wouldn't have to modify at all. Everything would basically just fall right into place. And either the LQ4 or the LQ9, they would be really great options, but it's been done to death. I mean, the LS engine, it's popular for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's easy to make good power. Number two, they're compact. Parts are inexpensive. So, I mean, as good as all that sounds, I actually wanted to go outside of the LS family. But, like my original requirement was, I still wanted to have a 24 tooth reluctor wheel on the crank, a 1X tooth on the cam, and it still had to fit in the truck. So. The engine that I chose has a few more cubic inches, and by a few more I actually mean a whole lot more. Let me show you what I mean. Want to talk about go big or go home? 
This is pretty much one of the biggest production engines GM ever stuck under the hood of a car or a truck. To my knowledge, the only regular production engine that's bigger was the 500 Cadillac, which came in, you know, 68, 69, 70, and kind of into the mid 70s. Um, this is an 8.1 Vortec. That's 496 cubic inches. Now it's not the same thing as a 502, the crate motor that GM sold for many years and I still believe sells. You know, of course they made the 572 and some other crate motors that were bigger, but I'm talking about regular production engines. As far as I know, this is almost as big as it gets. It was made for Silverados and Sierras, you know, the HD 2500 and 3500 trucks between 2000 and 2006, I believe. The factory rating on this thing is 340 horsepower and 440 pounds of torque. But at 1000 RPM, basically idle, this thing is making 400 pounds of torque and it carries that pretty much through the operating range. So if you want to talk about capacity to move something to make power, cubic inches is the way to go. Now, let's talk about the reasons of why I'm choosing to go to a big block instead of an LS. Now, I could just as easily have put this money into something like a turbo kit. I could have put a 70 or 76 millimeter turbo on the 5.3, you know, cranked it up to five or 600 horsepower, and I'd be making more power than this makes in its current state. However, it's been done to death. I've done it before. I had a white 2010 Silverado I built several years back. It was fun to drive, it was spunky, but it's not different. I kind of have that dare to be different theme or vibe that I'm trying to go for. So, you know, a 5.3 or a 6.0, you know, even the newer 6.2 LS3 type stuff, just it doesn't really stand that far outside of the box. This basically crushes the box. So let's talk about pros and cons really quick. Pros, it'll dump right into the truck. I do have to make some custom mounts to actually bolt it in because of the frame mount combination. It never came from a factory truck in a 1500 two wheel drive, but that's not a huge deal. Um, it'll work with a stock computer. It'll work with a stock wiring harness. All in all, it's relatively simple to get this L18 under the hood of ugly truck and it'll work with the 4L80 that I put in, and I know the 4L80 will be up to the task of this much torque. Now, let's talk about cons because there are some. Now, the first thing that people are gonna say is, well, the L18, the 8.1, it doesn't have that much aftermarket support, and that's fairly true. You know, there are some camshafts, there's one place that makes cylinder heads, different intake modifications that you can do, um, but they are a little bit more expensive than traditional LS parts. The pistons, they're said to be a little bit weaker, but we're going to put that to the test. Um, but mainly it's expense. Parts for this are usually a little bit more expensive. But I'm actually still going to try to go with a budget route, even with this engine. I'm going to use, at first, as many stock parts as I can to get it under the hood and wired up and running. Basically, it's going to be 100% stock. And then I'm going to build it up in stages. My ultimate goal, you know, down the road, this is probably several months, maybe a year down the road, I'm gonna have a big old turbo bolted up to the side of this thing and I'm gonna see exactly how much power I can pump out of it. But that's down the road. The very first thing I'm gonna do, like I said, get it under the hood, get it running, and just see how much fun this 8.1 is gonna be in a lightweight two-wheel drive pickup. Now, if you believe what you read on the internet, to get this 8.1 into my two-wheel drive truck, I'm gonna have to modify the passenger side motor mount on the frame side of the truck. I believe you just have to move it three inches farther forward because the passenger side mount on an LS is three inches farther back. From what I have read, the driver side frame mount will work exactly in the position that it's in with the stock L18 uh, frame isolator or motor mount or whatever you want to call it. From the outside, the rest of the stuff just kind of looks like standard LS fare. It has LS coil packs, the coil harness is exactly the same thing as on the 5.3, same style injector connector, you know, the bell housing, that's just standard Chevy stuff, small block, big block, LS going back for a million years. Um, I did pick up a complete dropout engine, which means I got everything. I've got the wire harness over in the corner, but you know, alternator, power steering, uh, air conditioning, water pump alternator, like I said, it's got everything there. Um, I am going to have to adapt my throttle body. This is a standard three bolt throttle body, but it uses an LS6 style 
drive-by wire throttle body where my engine has a drive-by cable. Um, the drive-by cable throttle body will bolt right up to this intake. However, I am going to have to relocate or modify the oil fill tube because the actuator or the, the cable basically mounts right here. So I'll just cut this and weld a little elbow on it and kind of make it sit over to this side. Other than that, pretty basic motor swap stuff and it shouldn't be too difficult to get this L18 under the hood of ugly truck. So over the next couple weeks, I'm going to show you guys exactly the steps that it'll take me to swap out the 5.3 in favor of the larger 8.1. And I'm not positive yet, but I think I'll be able to get the truck onto a dyno as it sits so I can see how much of the original horsepower is still making its way down to the back tires. And then when this whole thing is said and done, we'll dyno it again to see how much horsepower that we've gained. Now, one more reason why I'm going with such a big engine, well, it's a little bit sentimental actually, because back in high school and middle school, I had a 76 Chevy C10 and I swapped in a 472 Cadillac V8. Now, that truck was a blast to drive and the engine was rated at 375 horsepower and 525 pounds of torque. And that thing, like I said, it was a blast. It got me into a little bit of trouble, but I'm kind of going to recreate that vibe big engine in a little truck with ugly truck because like I said I'm a diesel guy I like lots of torque I like lots of power as well so I want to say thank you guys for being subscribers already and if you haven't you might want to click that subscribe button because we do have some great technical content coming over the next several weeks and hopefully forever about Chevy trucks pickups high performance and all kinds of fun stuff Thank you again for watching. I'm LT, and if you were bored by today's video, well, you're in luck because here are some burnouts for you to watch. Getting dizzy and motion sick. There we go. Come on. 